All right, it's a nice day out, so I thought I'd come outside and do a video. I want to talk about two quick things pertaining to the RVers, van dwellers, nomads, whatever you want to call them, or the wheeled wonders, as I refer to them as. Now, uh, I live on a busy street, so there's going to be some road noise, but hey, deal with it. <laughs> What is up blind viewers? That's right. There's going to be road noise. I live on a busy street, but it is so nice out here. It's a little overcast. It's 70 degrees and there's a nice little light breeze. So it is so comfortable. So I figured I'm going to come out here, sit amongst the ferns on the porch and do a video. All right. First, I want to talk about box truck Corey. All right. Box truck Corey. He just had an injury to his knee, did some ligament tendon damage to his knee. Not so serious, he doesn't need surgery or anything, but he is an immobilizer from his hip to his ankle. That's right, keeping his leg all nice and stiff. So he made a video about, uh, you know, when you're on the road and you get an injury, how do you deal with things? Now, uh, he's got a mobility issue now, just climbing in and out of his RV or box truck. And uh, luckily it's his left leg, so it's not his driving leg, but even just driving with this thing. So we'll go over and check out Box Truck Corey and uh, see how this young fella, that's right, he's a young guy, deals with having an injury on the road. So this got me to thinking. Now, a lot of the folks that I watch and that uh, come over and hang out with me on Thirsty Thursdays and whatnot, well, we are in the, uh, the, the older variety, shall we speak? <laughs> <laughs> the more seasoned variety of folks so it's like uh yeah you know a lot of the, a lot of them are single older ladies that are out there on the road by themselves uh even the older guys or not so older guys if they would get injured and they're out there and they're alone traveling by themselves or even if they are with a tribe you know how does that affect everything? And are you prepared to deal with such a little accident? Uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be major. You can just be out walking around or even just hop out of your RV or whatever the wrong way, twist an ankle. Now, sure, it's not detrimental. It's not life-threatening or anything, but it will lay you up for a while. You can't get around. Even an older couple. You know, you got an older couple that are used to doing things together. Now, one of them down, you're out on the road. Now, what do you got to do? You have to take the brunt of all the responsibilities plus take care of your partner and then that can put a strain on things the travel plans and everything else so are you equipped ready and able to deal with such an injury because it's something that i think all you guys need to think about and uh after watching like i said this young fella uh get an injury while on the road and how he has to deal with it it got me to thinking about how some of these older folks might uh have to deal with some of these things I mean, even if you are out, say, boondocking and you're in a place where you can stay for, you know, two weeks without having to move while you heal up and get so you can get a little bit mobile again, you still got to, you know, dump your tanks, get water and do all the other stuff. So uh, just want to talk about that a little bit, make sure everybody's kind of prepared and has that in their mind when they're out there traveling all over the, the place, whether it be this country or others. But uh, yeah, keep that in mind and have something ready for uh, just in case. Like Corey, he's, you know, he's got this swelling going on. He said in about a week or two, the, when the swelling goes down, all his pain will go away. But until then, he's pretty much immobile. You know, he has very limited mobility. And uh, again, he's a dude traveling by himself and just climbing in and out of things is a real pain in the ass. So just imagine if, you know, you hurt your arm, your shoulder, your hand, or whatever, you know, just driving or doing things, just cooking for yourself, or like I said, dumping your tanks and shit like that. So uh, something to think about and uh, try to prepare for. So go over and watch Box Truck Corey's video about his injury. Maybe you can get some tips and ideas, but uh, just something I want you guys to think about.
Now the next one is badge. Everyone needs one. Now he just did a video about getting ripped off at the mechanic shop. Yeah, it happens all the time. Now I took uh, three years of auto mechanics way back in the 80s, so <laughs> has no relevance to now. But three years of auto mechanics made me just uh, dangerous enough to tinker with my own shit <laughs> and know enough that was one of these guys tell me, oh, you need this or this is broken. I can call bullshit. Now, Badge, Badge has been doing this for, I don't know what, close to 50 years or more, something like that. He is well more versed in this and well more knowledgeable than I am. And his main message, I guess, is don't feel picked on and uh, don't feel special because <laughs> they're not just trying to bullshit you. They're bullshitting everybody. It even happens to him. You know, and I've, I hear it a lot. I've heard it for years that, you know, especially the women, they say, oh, these mechanics, they always try to take advantage of us women because they think we're stupid. Well, I'm here to tell you, ladies, you don't have to feel that way. You're not special. <laughs> well, you're special, but not in this aspect. Yeah, you're not special. They do it to everybody. And here's the deal. See, when you go in just to one of these places, you say, okay, I need an oil change. You drop your stuff off. You know, change my oil. The guy who's doing that has a boss that says, upsell, upsell, upsell. You want to keep your job? You want to be working here tomorrow? You want to pay your bills? You want to feed your kids? You got to sell shit besides this oil change. So they're going to come out and they're going to tell you, oh, well, you need uh, your coolant needs topped off or this air filter needs changed. It happened to me a week or so ago. Went in to get the oil changed in the car. The guy comes out and tells me that the air filter for the cabin air, you know, the one that goes into the to the compartment, the people compartment, that the, the filter need changed and something need topped off or whatever. I said, no, don't worry about it. Just change my oil. Like I asked you, thank you, please. And you know, let me go about my day and you go about yours. So again, I know just enough to be dangerous enough to tell these guys, you know, bullshit. So when we got home, I looked, my coolant level did not need topped off. So they would have just said they did it and then charged me for it. And I popped open the little compartment and pulled the little filter out for the, you know, the, the people area. And I pulled it out and I was like, this thing don't need to change. I put it back in and closed up the little compartment. Now, sure, it wasn't brand new, but it was nowhere near where it needed to be changed. Now, they're, you know, they're looking at me, one, I'm walking in with my wife. I have a cane and my glasses on. So they're like, this blind asshole, he doesn't know. I can tell him there's a dent in his hood and he probably wouldn't know. Well, guess what? You're wrong. So uh, they probably, and they were probably guessing that this guy don't even know where this filter for this compartment is. Well, I did know where it was and I looked at it. So it just goes to show you that it's not just people that have no mechanical abilities at all that they're targeting. It's not just the weak women that they think they can get over on. No, it's everybody. It's a class A mechanic who knows a car inside out, could probably build one from scratch. They do the same thing to everybody because unfortunately, customer service, there is none. I don't care what industry it is. There is no such thing as customer service anymore. No one cares about you. No one cares about your product, whatever it may be. All they care about is making money, 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 money. And they will tell you, oh, your coolant level needs topped off. It's perfectly fine and full. So if you go, oh, we'll top it off. They don't do anything. They charge you for a gallon of coolant. You go look at it and go, oh yeah, it's nice and full. They topped it off for me. Well, they didn't do a damn thing. It happens all the time. Sad, but true. That is just the world we live in. So. Go over and watch Badge's video. He talks all about it. Again, more knowledgeable fellow than I am, but he'll explain it to you. And the thing is, okay, I live in sticks and bricks, but I still have a car. People get to, you know, have vehicles to get from point A to point B, whether it be to work, to the grocery store, whatever it be, church on Sundays, whatever. But you guys out there in the RV world, you're running around and you're living in these things. So. You try to take care of it, right? Oh, we want to go in and we want to get the oil changed regularly. We want to get our tires rotated and checked to make sure everything's good to go. Get our brakes checked because we want this big old hog to stop when we need to. You know, because you know you guys are rolling around in, uh, in an RV with every fucking thing you own in it. So if it's not 
overloaded. It's probably close to the max weight limit. You know it is. You got everything in there. But still, you try to take care of these things. And if you got, say, you're pulling a trailer or a fifth wheel or whatever, you want to make sure that that thing that you're dragging it with can stop, can keep pulling this thing, that all the systems are working, that all the fluid levels are topped off and everything's good to go. So you go in to someone who is a professional and you take their word for it. Unfortunately, that's what we have to do. It's no different than going to the doctor. Hey, doc, it hurts here. What is it? Well, what's this? Well, you believe him? He's the one that went to school for four, six, eight years, whatever it was. He's the one with the degree. He's the professional, the knowledgeable one, right? So you trust him. Same thing with a mechanic. This guy's been tearing cars apart forever. He knows what he's talking about. I just drive it. If a light comes on, I... What's that mean? Hey, dude, this light came on. What is it? And you have to kind of trust them. And that's so hard to find a mechanic that you can actually trust. So, what's the answer? I don't know. But the thing is, is when you guys are out there roaming around and this thing is not just you're from point A to point B vehicle, it's your home, you have to be, get a little bit of knowledge to know when somebody's trying to bullshit you and when they're not. And when you do find that good mechanic, even if you have to drive 300, 400 miles or across the country to go see that guy, go do it. Because it's hard to find a mechanic that you can trust that ain't going to try to screw you. I don't know what else to tell you. But these are the things I would like you guys while you're out there traveling around. That's right. I care about you guys. No matter what I look like and how I rant and rave and how some of the people in the comments <laughs> portray me as the creepy freaky dude with weird hair and I look like a drug addict or a wannabe biker or a wannabe rocker or the myriad of other names they decide to call me. <laughs> I'm an all right guy and I, uh, I do watch your videos and I care what happens to you. I want you guys to be safe and I want you to think about these things that when you're out there, are you prepared to have a little injury and have some downtime? Do you have somebody you can call? Are you with a tribe or a group that you can rely on them to, to help you? Are you alone? Are you out there by yourself? Are you ready for all this stuff? If you have even a little minor injury, that's going to have you down for even a week. It could put a damper on things. And when you go into the shop for an oil change and someone tells you you need a tie rod end, can you call bullshit? Well, that's the things I want you guys to think about. And like Badge says, go watch his video. It's not just you. They're not picking on just you. They do it to everybody. And it's sad, but we have to deal with it. This is Blind Views. Thanks for watching. And that's the way I see it. What we do here is go back, 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 back.